Hello there, your beloved half-human half-goblin Bruce has just returned from the depths of the oblivion itself to bring another fine piece of content, this time about the famous Abworth poltergeist case. However, I realize that there are those among you who are not that familiar with the phenomenon of poltergeist, so let me explain it to you real quick. I suggest looking at its title first, and those more German-speaking of you have already observed that the term poltergeist consists of two German words. The words are poltern, meaning rumble, and geist, meaning ghost, hence for poltergeist, which means rumbling or noisy ghost. It is because the poltergeist likes to express himself in a way that includes levitation of objects such as furniture and cutlery, movement of objects such as furniture and cutlery, and annoying people in multiple ways such as hitting, biting or pinching. The following video is great even though a little exaggerated demonstration of it. So, now that our vocabulary has become larger, we can finally delve into the subject that you have clicked for. All of it took place in the area of Abforth Vicarage in northern Lincolnshire. The year was 1716, when local reverend Samuel Wesley started hearing weird noises in his home that kept his wife and children from a peaceful sleep at night. The weird noise hearing period then went for two whole months, which isn't a lot when compared to other poltergeist cases, but it's still two months more than the Wesley family would wish for. Now, let's talk a little about the noises themselves. What were they like? They often resembled sounds of walking on stairs or knocking on the wall, so clearly uncommon sounds that can be made by a normal, non-supernatural human being. Unfortunately, the poltergeist didn't really stick to sounds only, sometimes the family has found traces of broken glass or furniture scattered all around the place. Which again, is something accomplishable by a non-supernatural human being, and my friend Johnny will demonstrate it to you. <laughs> So, now that we have seen that all of the Epworth poltergeist phenomena can be easily done by humans, have they been done by humans? And the answer is most likely yes! For the whole poltergeist thing was probably responsible their servant Robert Brown. If nothing, he's at least the most suspicious one, because on multiple poltergeist occasions he was the only to witness them. And this isn't coming from me, but from British researcher Dr. Trevor Hall. And now, the last part of the explanation comes. The more observant of you have noticed that we are lacking any motive. What could possibly cause the old servant to troll the reverend and his family so much? Well, as the famous British scientist author C. Clarke states in his book World of Strange Powers, the reverend wasn't really popular between the people of Epworth, mostly due to his theological opinions. Wesley was quite a large supporter of Anglican Arminianism and contemporary bigotry during the time when the public was sick with intolerant or zealous churchmen. And this wasn't the only possible motive, as the Wesley family held multiple financial debts. Here we can see that it takes just a little bit of research and common sense to explain 300 years old paranormal case. So that would be everything to this rather interesting story, as soon as possible I'll be back with another video. Until then I'm sending blessings over tribal gods upon you.